My name is Dr. Leslie Rollock, a Senior Medical Officer of Health in the Ministry of Health and Wellness, and we are in the Grandy Adams International Airport to talk to you a bit about our Enhanced Surveillance Program in response to the new coronavirus, COVID-19. On arrival, passengers who by their documentation indicate that they've been inside China within the past 14 days are flagged by immigration and directed to Port Health for screening which involves checking of their temperatures and questions to determine their level of risk of exposure. Right now, this applies to travelers from China because of the events taking place in that country. However, if other countries also demonstrate high levels of spread within their country, those passengers will also be flagged for the same process. Enhanced surveillance is for travelers from China and any other country which may demonstrate um, spread of the virus within the country. It is not for Chinese nationals or any specific nationality. In fact, many students from Barbados are studying in China and if they return, or when they return, they will also be subjected to this enhanced surveillance. On arrival, if the passenger has no symptoms, the interview by Port Health is to determine their risk of exposure to the infection. If they're deemed to be at low risk of exposure, they're directed to quarantine themselves at home. If they are determined to have been at high risk of exposure, they're then directed to mandatory quarantine in a facility that is managed by the Ministry of Health and Wellness. A person at high risk of exposure, for example, is someone who would have been a healthcare worker working in an institution that cared for persons with confirmed disease, or a person who lived in a household and cared for someone who was a confirmed case of um, COVID-19. A person at low risk of exposure comes from a country with cases. However, they've had no close contact with a confirmed case and they just happen to be in the country where there are cases. Um, such a person, however, because there is a low risk of exposure, there's not no risk of exposure, they still have to be monitored for the, up to the 14 days to determine if illness occurs. That could be due to COVID-19. Persons at high risk of exposure to the COVID-19 virus are directed to mandatory quarantine. That is, they are taken to a facility that is manned by healthcare workers under the management of the Ministry of Health and Wellness. They are not ill, but because the risk of illness occurring is that much higher, they need to be under uh, medical supervision. One, to ensure that they stay away from other persons and also to detect the first appearance of illness. Persons at low risk of exposure are allowed to go to their homes or the places where they are staying and they are asked to monitor their temperature and themselves for symptoms for the period of time that they will be under um, observation. And a healthcare team, surveillance team, will go to check them daily to verify that their temperatures and symptoms are as they have um, reported. If they are going to uh, place for self-quarantine, if they're going to a place where there are other family members, it is expected that they would um, separate themselves as much as possible from other members of the family so that if they do become ill, they don't put the other members of the family at risk. So we recommend that they are in a room by themselves. If possible, have a bathroom to themselves. If the bathroom is not to their sole use, it must be dis infected, cleaned and disinfected after their use each time um, for the period of time that they are separated from members of the family. While the um, low risk of exposure persons are at home in self-quarantine, they are visited by the Ministry of Health surveillance team daily to have their temperatures actually taken, even though they've been given a thermometer and asked to take their temperatures twice daily. So the Ministry of Health team visits, takes their temperature, and records whether they are showing signs and records also if they are feeling any symptoms, which would include things like uh, respiratory symptoms such as sore throat and uh, runny nose or stuffy nose or cough. 
and of course fever. But we recognize that the cough and the runny nose can occur before the fever. So they monitor symptoms and signs as well. Persons are required to stay at home in their rooms. If they don't stay in the room and they mingle with the family, the family is at risk even though the risk is low. If they have been observed or it is determined that they are contravening or breaking quarantine, they can be transferred to mandatory quarantine for the period of time that is left. The period of quarantine is for up to 14 days, which is the incubation period, the time from infection to the arrival of symptoms in a particular person. So if our traveler has stopped somewhere for part of that time, from the time, the day that they left the country, in this case China, their period of incubation will be to make up the 14 days. It is not 14 days from arrival in Barbados. It is the rest of the 14 days from exposure in the particular country. Since persons are asked to check themselves daily, they're also asked to report symptoms. They are in contact with their surveillance team. So if they develop symptoms before the team comes, they're asked to call their surveillance, is usually a nurse, and say that they have symptoms. Then a team, um, if, they, if, they cannot, if we cannot verify the symptoms remotely, you know that there are mechanisms these days, video calls and so on. If we can't verify the symptoms remotely, a team, another team now, not their surveillance team, will visit the household um, and they will wear protective clothing because, of course, it is a possibility that this could be COVID-19. So they will wear protective clothing, go to the household, uh, verify the symptoms, take the temperature again, and arrange, if the person is actually ill with respiratory symptoms, arrange for their transfer to the isolation center. If a person is found to have um, symptoms, signs with a fever, as reported to their surveillance nurse, they are transported to the isolation center by ambulance. And everybody in that instance wears full protective clothing in the event that the illness turns out to be COVID-19. At the isolation center, investigations are performed to determine if the infection is present. These include a swab that is sent to the um, National Public Health Lab, the Best of Santos Public Health Laboratory, for testing for the virus. In addition, depending on the symptoms, a chest X-ray and other investigations may also be performed. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hi. Hi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And I'm Dr. Ward. This is Dr. Walter Aline. Yeah, Okay. You are, you are pearl best. Well, we heard that you may have been experiencing some, some symptoms. What, what symptoms are you experiencing? <laughs> I've been coughing, sore throat, you know, and the, the, the fever up, the temperature gone up. Okay, well, we're, we're just going to use yeah. our thermometer just okay. to make sure to verify the temperature, okay? okay? We're going to put it close to your, to your face. Just give me one moment. Yes, the temperature is 38 degrees Celsius. All right. All right. So, because you've been exposed and you came to us uh, and you would have received your paper and instructions from the airport, thank you very much for notifying us promptly about your symptoms. Okay. All right. So, what we're going to do for you, ma'am, is we are going to transfer you to a facility where you can receive further care in a secure area. Uh, is that okay with you? Test? Yes, we can also test you there as well. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to call for your transport so that you can leave here, go to the transport, and then go down to the isolation facility.
Hi, good afternoon. My name is Dr. Ali. Uh, we came to assess a patient that was referred to us. Uh, she traveled from China. Uh, she arrived in Barbados and while she was under her quarantine period, she developed symptoms, mainly a sore throat, a cough and a fever. We've already spoken with the Ministry of Health and Wellness and we've set up the isolation center and thanks a lot for coming to transport our patient. Come inside. This is Ms. Pearl Bess. This is the lady we spoke to you about, all right? And we need to transport it to the isolation facility. Ms. Bess, this is Ms. Johnson. Uh, she works with the emergency ambulance service and she is going to be transporting you to the isolation facility. All right, are you ready? Yes. Let's go. You're able to walk? Yes, please. Okay. Go ahead. This period of enhanced surveillance is to try to ensure that we discover the first case or cases that would arrive in the country from outside and manage them so that we limit the spread of this infection in Barbados. Persons are reminded that it is a respiratory illness and because this is the usual time of our influenza season that to protect themselves they need to practice hand hygiene regularly which is washing hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds especially before hands are placed in eyes, nose or mouth and if they have an infection, a respiratory infection, to cover their coughs and sneezes in a tissue preferably and dispose of that in a covered um, receptacle, waste receptacle, followed by hand hygiene. This is the time to wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands.